if I can. Amen. And I'm asking everyone to, to please be careful right now. I don't know what this bug or this flu is that's going around, but there are many, many people right now that are getting sick with a cold or getting sick with some form of a flu. Mm -hmm. um, be careful. Um, just a word of, of, of wisdom. When you're out, put your mask on. Yes, it's yes. better to be safe than it is. Be sorry. I have a few people that will wind up coming up with COVID again, but then we have other people that are being sick with colds. It's not COVID, but it's some form of the flu. So please, please, please take care of yourself and plenty of water and keep your mask on. Amen. Psalms 34 11, Psalms 84 11, I'm sorry. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Yes. The Lord grants favor and honor. He does not withhold the good from those who live with integrity. He does not hold, withhold the good from those who live with integrity. For a few minutes, if I can use as a subject, I just want to use this subject because of God's favor. Yeah. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's because of his favor because that we have what we have. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Father, we thank you now for this time that we have to share. And I ask you, O oh God, that you remove me from self, that you may be heard. That when they hear me, they don't hear me, but they hear you. When they see, they don't see me, but they see you. Speak now, Holy Ghost, clearly. That it may enter the hearts, the souls, the minds, and the spirit of those that are listening. And Father God, that it will take effect, that we may move in the way that it pleases you. And you get all of the glory from us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The first thing I want to point out is this thing called favor. This thing called favor. According to... I have a good friend that I hang out with, and this friend's name is Webster. Uh, Pastor West, I think you know, you know that guy. He's a, he, Mr. Webster, I, 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 we, we, we frequently hang out. And, and so I asked him a question, and I said, I said, Web, uh, what is favor? And he said, from his definition, he said, it's, it's a friendly regard shown towards another especially by a superior. In other words, he says that, that, that somebody that is higher than you, um, he actually shows you this special regard because of something that you did. Amen? The other one says, it's a special privilege or right granted or conceded. What I like about Webster is Webster knows the Lord. If we find out and search Webster, Webster was a Christian himself. That's why when you look at definitions from Webster, you will find that a lot of the definitions from Webster, from Webster will line up with Scripture. In fact, he will literally give you uh, examples in his definition that are straight, strictly biblically uh, supported. Have I got a witness? And so when he says that, that, that is, it is a friendly regard shown towards another, especially by a superior. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Now, according to the Bible, the Bible's definition of it, or the way the Bible defines it is, 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 is favor is, is a demonstrated delight. Hmm. It's a demonstrated delight. In other words, in other words, it's something that God is doing for you tangibly that you will delight in because of something that you have done to warrant it from him spiritually. Exactly. Have we got it? Have we got it? So spiritually, listen, spiritually, when we line ourselves up with what God does or who God is, then favor gets connected to us because of our walk with him. Amen? And, and therefore, from there, he allows us to have this thing called favor. And he demonstrates that through our acts of obedience and our walking in his will. He will demonstrate that tangibly. Amen. Amen. The favor of God can be described as 
tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. Right. Can I give you an example? When you, Josh, apply for a job that you have no experience in, but it interests you, and God allows for favor to rest upon the hiring manager mm. and simply say that there's something about you yes. that's a perfect fit regardless of what the paper says about your experience. Mm. Amen. Because when you are walking in the fullness of who God is, when you are walking in the power of who God is, when you're walking in the obedience of who God is, and God rests favor upon your life, the Bible declares that he will allow favor to be shown amongst men. All right, all right. And it doesn't matter what you qualify for on paper, because when you are walking in the auspice of who God is, you already qualify in heaven. Right. When you qualify in heaven, it automatically says when God is ready to point you in that direction, he will open up the door and that is called unmerited favor. All right, all right, all right. God's favor, it's also God's extended grace which brings his unmerited favor. Meaning we don't deserve it, but we do have it. Now watch this. God's favor is available for everybody. Amen. Amen. But everybody don't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we got a yeah, yeah. God's favor is extended to all. Yes. But just because you are a child of God doesn't mean that you are being graced with his favor. All right, all right. Yes. Yes. Because some of us hold the title, but we do not move in the direction of showing him that we're worthy of his favor. And listen, and when you really line yourself up with God, it ain't just favor, but it's unmerited favor. It's undeserved favor. It's, it's this favor that you couldn't buy even if you had all the money. As a matter of fact, it's favor that helps you get that Rolls Royce next year. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Come on here, somebody. <laughs> Mother, be careful how you speak it in the air because God hears it. If you line up, he'll be dropping a whole truck load of
In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word translated uh, integrity means the condition of being without blemish, completeness or perfection, sincerity, soundness, uprightness, and wholeness. Integrity in the New Testament simply means honesty and adherence to the pattern of good work. When you adhere to the pattern of good work, you must first understand what the Bible says about us working while it is yet day. Amen. Amen. And when he says working, he's not always talking about plowing the fields. He's not always talking about building the house. But he is talking about reaching the souls. He is talking about ministering the gospel. He is talking about feeding the hungry. He is talking about looking after the widows and the orphans. He is talking about encouraging those that are incarcerated. He is talking about going to the convalescent hospital and saying something to somebody that was forgotten about. He is saying this is the good work that he's looking for us to do. And how do we do that if we don't live with integrity? Living with godly integrity says I don't care what man thinks about me as long as it pleases God. I'm in. Come on here somebody. We had a celebration and, and folks were saying, what, is, what colors are we wearing? And what, what are we doing? What are we that? What are we this? And I told them, I said, you know what? For the first time, I see this in a different light. Why are we so focused on what color to wear? Why are we so focused on how this looks and how that looks? Why don't we focus on the purpose by which we celebrate? Because if we focus on how we look, we miss what we're doing and why we're doing it. Have I got a witness? Because if you're too cute to lift up your hands and say, amen, then you missed it. Yeah. But when I live with integrity, I say, if all I can come in is a sweatsuit and some house shoes, I'm there with an open heart to receive what the Lord has for me. Because it's not about what I got on the outside, but it is about what I have. But godly integrity would say, give it your all, regardless of what's going on on the outside. Yeah. When we think about integrity, the integrity of God is not just a passing function. In fact, it is a godly lifestyle. Mm. We must live this life that represents who God is. Yeah. We must live this life that says we respect and honor the word of God when it comes down to the commandments and all the orders that God has given us to live a godly life before him because I need you to know and understand Chantel that sometimes we are the only Bible or God that somebody will see and when we put our integrity down just because we want to fit in for a minute the assignment that you have for that one person to see God in you you miss it and that means that now you have to deal with the consequence by compromising instead of walking in full integrity I'm simply saying that there are people that are looking at all of us that you don't know that are looking at you, that are watching everything that you do, that are looking how you talk, watching how you dress, looking at how you interact, and they know that you are a Christian, and the only reason that they got some hope that God can do for them what he's doing for you is by watching you and how you deal with your circumstances. So when you walk in the integrity of God, what happens is you can be cussed out, but you hold your peace and let God fight your battle. You, you can have a little bit, but you'll put your little in the hands of God, and he'll make it much. You'll remember that no matter what my physical situation is, my Bible says that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches. And when I can stand in this integrity, people will look and say, I don't know how you do it, but I want a little bit of what you have. And then you tell them this kind of favor only comes from living with integrity. How do we adhere to the patterns of good works? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not into your own understanding but in all of your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. If I expect to live in integrity, I must first acknowledge Him who I am living for. I must acknowledge that I can't do anything without Him but I can do everything with Him. All things are possible with Jesus. But I must have it made up in my mind I can't just pick up and quote a scripture when I need something, but I've got to read the word of God so that it becomes a pattern in my life and that my life begins to transform to the living word because the living 
word will lead me, guide me, and direct me to the way God wants me to live. And every single time I want to act up because his word is on the inside of me, godly integrity appears and say, you know that's not the thing that you should do. You know you shouldn't say that. You know you shouldn't be there. You know you shouldn't hang out with them. Stop feeling bad because you can't hang out with Pookie Day Day and Sean Sean them no more. They're not where you're going, so sometimes God will bring you away because his favor will be resting upon you. Yeah. Has to be in a place where they see it from afar. Yeah. Because if they see it too close, they might try to take the credit. All right. All right. All right. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. yeah. According to Matthew 6 and 33, it tells us to do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then all things. And then all things. See, what we tend to do when we don't walk in Christian integrity and godly integrity, we seem to seek our money. We seem to seek our ability. We seem to seek our popularity. We seem to seek favors from other people to try to get what we want. But when we are committed to living with godly integrity, we don't do nothing without asking God first. The person that I like to reflect to is Jesus. Jesus came down in the form of man. So he was all spirit and he was all man. But he never did anything without straying away and seeking God first. He never made a decision without seeking God first. He never laid hands without seeking God first. He never healed without seeking God first. He never spoke without seeking God first because he understood even though I am one with him, as man, I still must show man how to do it from this side of it. And when he did it, he says, if it be thy will. Yes, yes. Amen. Because if I'm living in Christian integrity and godly integrity, I must seek him first. Because what I needed to happen is this. Not only do I need it to bring him glory, but I also need it to be extended favor upon me. That somebody else may see the hand of God moving because of my integrity. Oh, man. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Christian integrity is important. Mm -hmm. Here's an example of God's favor. It was on the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. God's favor rested upon them, and it wasn't them that it literally rested upon, but it rested on, it was extended to them because of Moses. Amen. God allowed for this tangible favor yeah. to be shown upon a man that was living in godly integrity. Mm -hmm. you, you, you say Moses killed the man. He did. Yes. He did. He did it. Hey, it's, no, it's, it's no justifiable reason to say, oh, he did it, but it was because of X, Y, and Z. He, he did it. He did it. But when he got himself, when he was right with God and God sent him back, the Bible says that God used him to speak to an evil king yes. who was not willing to allow these people to go. They, they were in bondage and slavery for three, four hundred years in bondage and slavery, but God sent him in to do what? He says, God, I'm of uncircumcised lips. I can't speak to this man. He won't understand what I'm saying. Here goes some favor. He says, I'm going to send your brother with you because your brother knows what you're saying. And since he knows what you're saying, he can tell the king what I'm saying. So when he let favor rest, he let favor rest and God allowed for all of these things to happen for the children of Israel to go. But watch how favor begins to rest. Now I'm running, we're leaving, and I got the Red Sea in front, and I got an army of, of men coming behind me. And the person that God sent that's walking in integrity, he says, lift up your rod. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard a man tell me a joke, mother. He was working on a house Monday. <laughs> and the man came outside, he says, when I was little, back in Louisiana, he said, I heard this joke. He said, there was this little boy that went to Sunday school, Reverend. And he came home, and his daddy said, boy, what you learn in Sunday school today? He said, well, he said, I learned that it was the children of Israel, they was leaving out of Egypt. And they, they built this bridge over the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And they went across to the other side, and then they had a pocket full of dynamite. Mm -hmm. And the Pharaoh and them came across the bridge, they blew the bridge up, and the Pharaoh and them died in the water. And, and, and his father says, boy, is that what they teaching you in Sunday school? He said, no, but that other story, you wouldn't believe it at all. <laughs> so in other words, but he got the story. So the favor didn't stop there. But 
the Bible says that the favor continued to extend because when they got hungry, uh, 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 Moses went to God and favor rested upon him because manna began to fall. And, and when they complained about it, they, they didn't want just bread. God, the, the next time he spoke and God allowed favor to come because now it's quail coming down more than they can eat. Every single time the water becoming sweet from being bitter. Every single time there was something going on. God used the person that was walking in Christian integrity, God, the integrity yeah. to allow unmerited favor to allow this tangible form of favor to rest on him. Why? Because when you are obedient, favor rests on you, but everybody around you can be impacted. Yeah. Brother, that's why when you stand flat-footed and say, I'm going to do what I have to do to please God and help keep the doors open, and when he rests favor up on you, it doesn't matter who's down here with you when you're down here. It doesn't matter who's sweeping when you're sweeping. It doesn't matter who's cleaning up the kitchen when you're cleaning up the kitchen. When the favor rests upon you, everyone that's in the proximity of who you are gets a piece of what God has rested upon you, not because they deserve it, but because they are able to see God moving on your behalf. And maybe that'll help them. So think about it. If we all walked in Christian integrity and God walked and dropped a little bit of favor on you and a little bit on you and a little bit on you and a little bit on you. Think about how much favor rests up in this building. That When people come up in here, it's like the church of, in, in, in the book of Acts, when it gets to talking about how they all came together at this time and laid their possessions down at the feet of the bishops, at the prophets. They laid their feet and there was nobody in the area that had lack because they all came together on one accord. And when God allows for a group of people to have this unmerited favor at the same time, oh my, 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 it shouldn't be nobody in the room that's missing out on anything mentally, physically, spiritually. Come on here. Because God's favor is not granted to everyone, just those that are living according to his will. Noah found favor in the eyes of God in Genesis 6. Because folks talked about him, but he understood who God was. Yes. He understood what God gave him. Yes. And this is where I have, we have our problem at in Christianity right now. The moment somebody talk about us, that we feel that we need to walk away from what God has assigned us to do. Yes. But I come to tell you that just like they told us when I was little, man don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. Yes. So it don't matter what he say. Matter of fact, most of the time folks that are talking about you, they hating on you because they didn't get called to do what you're doing. Yes. And the Bible says that Noah just kept on and kept on building. He didn't, didn't look to the left or the right, but he kept on building using the precise measurements that God gave him to build this thing. And at the day that God said that the flood was getting ready to come, all the people that laughed at him were no more, simply because when God let favor rest, it rested upon him. And he says, get your wife and you get your children and you get two of every animal. And then I'm going to put you in this boat and you stay in this boat because this is your survival. I need somebody to understand that when you allow for your integrity to be shown to God, God will put you in the belly of his hand, in the palm of his hand. And I don't care what kind of danger is surrounding you. God will keep you safe until he's ready to take you and expand you a little bit more. But the thing we've got to do is make sure that we are living with integrity. Yes, 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 yes. Living. Yes. Joseph had favor when he was born, when he was sold into slavery. Mm -hmm. He had favor when, five, when, when, the king's, when the king's wife was pushing up on him. He had favor when she lied on him. He had so much favor that he went from the pit to the palace. And from the palace to becoming a ruler. He went from the place of watch why God rested faith. Listen to his integrity. He had so much godly integrity that when God blessed him, to be in a high-ranking position. His brothers, the ones that did him wrong, did not recognize him. But he recognized them. And he could have not given them anything. But the Bible declares that he blessed them, sent them home with some good stuff. And then he identified to let them know who he was. And immediately, what did they say? Oh, hold on a minute. You, you going to still bless us like that no matter what you did? What we did to you. Yes, sir. Godly integrity says, I don't have to hold on to what you did to me. All right, all right. Because my Bible says that if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, yeah. he tells me that he will make my enemies my footstool. Yeah. God lets me know that if I can stand in who he is, yeah. that what they did to me, he'll reap it back, send it back to them seven times greater. Yeah. All I got to do is show God and no matter what goes on. And he says, I'm going to love you in spite of what you 
you did to me because my integrity says in spite of everything that goes on, my command is to love. Huh? Watch this. You may not see the events, the effects of who God is, how God moves in your life, especially yeah. when it comes to other folks coming against you. You may not see it right away. Yeah. Keep on living in integrity. Yes, Keep on living yes, with integrity. Mm -hmm. Because when God begins to show some things, it's going to be yeah. a 3D where yeah. big motion picture is going to have Dolby stereo sound. Yeah. It's going to have all this color. It's going to take the color. It's going to be all. As a matter of fact, it's even going to include that Rolls Royce. Yes, it is. And you're going to be like, oh my God, look at how God is moving. But it's not going to come when you want it, but when it comes, it's going to be right on time. My job is to do what? Just continue to live with integrity. Regardless of how I feel in my flesh, if I continue to live with integrity, my spirit will tell my flesh that it's going to be all right. Trouble don't last always. We can may endure for a night, but if I hang on, it's going to be all right. If I start shouting in the middle of what I got going on right now, I won't even realize how troublesome it is. Because I'm hanging on to this integrity. And God says, God says through David that he'll bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will continually be in his mouth. So when I'm living with integrity, my circumstance does not dictate my praise, but my praise does command my circumstance to the power. Because favor will rest upon me even in the midst of hell. When I'm living with integrity. Ruth found favor with God. For her living with negativity. But she found favor mm -hmm. with Boaz. Amen, amen. She was living around. It didn't look like things was going to happen. But she kept pushing. Mm -hmm. She kept pushing. She kept serving. And God turned around and blessed her amen. beyond. But listen. The Bible says in this passage of scripture. The Lord grants favor and honor. The Lord grants it to those that are living with. To those. Because watch this. He can't give someone favor mm. that misappropriates the position of being granted favor. Hallelujah. See, we'll misappropriate the favor that he gives us. We'll start saying that it was something that we did within ourselves. Mm. If it man, my talent, my goodness, my this, that, that. No, 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 baby. If God's favor allowed you, I don't care how good of a singer or rapper or drawer or, or, or architect or whatever. If God's favor is not on your life, you are not going to walk into the big light because that's not what God's will is for your life. But when favor lines up with, well, when your integrity lines up with God's favor because of God's will, then God's open up door to what the plan is for your life. And God is not going to give you more than you can have handle simply because he already understands that I can give you enough favor to help be a blessing to someone else but I'm not going to give you the kind of favor that's going to wind up making you walk away from you. All right. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. When we look at this he says he says that the Lord gives favor, mm -hmm. grants favor and honor. I don't know about you but everything we do should honor God and, and, and his fullness of who he is. Hallelujah. But when the master creator can grant you something and honor you mm -hmm. and all you got to do is live with yes, uh, he says I'm going to grant you favor mm -hmm. and honor. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to withhold anything that's good mm -hmm. from you yes. as long as you're living mm -hmm. with integrity. Amen. Right, right. I want somebody to catch that. Mm. Because you don't have to live with popularity. Hallelujah. Just live with integrity. Hallelujah. You don't have to live with having 1.5 million friends on Facebook. Amen. Just live with integrity. Right. You don't have to live with having the fanciest car on your block. Amen. Just live with integrity. Yeah. You don't have to live <clears throat> excuse me, and have the biggest house on the block. Yeah. Just live with integrity. Yeah. You don't have to be the boss on your job. But I, I, come, I guarantee you that if you live with integrity, he'll show you favor to have your own company. And be your own boss. Because that's the kind of God I serve. But what does it require? It requires me to live with integrity. It requires me to honor God with everything that I do. It requires me to salute him no matter what my situation is. 
It requires me to bless him at all times. Oh. It requires me to stay in my word, regardless if I'm going through something or not. Yeah. But I understand that when I read the Bible, yeah. the words of life begin to jump out at me and help me to make it through these things. Yeah. Pastor West, I'm telling you right now that you got so much word in you, yeah. and God has endowed you with so much of his anointing. Yeah. And I'm letting you know that favor rests, unmerited favor rests upon your life. Yeah. And today I'm sharing with you that you have the power in your hands yeah. to rest upon every aching part of your body yeah. and command it in the name of Jesus and by the yeah. blood of Jesus yeah. that the pain must subside and go away. Yeah. And you declare that in the name of Jesus yeah. by the power of the Holy Ghost yeah. and watch the unmerited favor of God rest upon you. Yeah. I'm not saying you're getting ready to go out there and be dunking on the basketball court <laughs> and that you're getting ready to race these young boys up and down the street. I ain't saying all of that. And if you do that, don't be blaming me saying that I said, I didn't say that. I said, rest your hands upon yourself and declare that I am healed in the name of Jesus, that this pain must subside because your life exemplifies you living with integrity, with godly integrity. And for that, God says, my unmerited favor rests upon your life. And that is a tangible fact that God will allow someone to see. On your back, on your legs, upon your stomach, yes. and you says in the name of Jesus, yes. Jesus. Yes. by the power and the blood of God, yes. I declare that yes. you will yes. fall subject to the power yes. of this favor that rests upon my life. Yes. Yes. I wish I had a witness. Yes. Daniel found favor. Yes. It was because of God's favor that Daniel found favor while he was laying Josh. In a den with three hungry lions. Yes, yes, yes. How is it that you got these lions in this uh, den that are hungry before I got there? Yes, yes. They're chilling while I'm there. Yes, and then got hungry again when I left. Yes, it ain't nothing but God's favor yes, that says the folk that told on me, now you got to go where I just came from. Yes, and the results ain't going to be the same. Yes, that Daniel got up and came on out. And it says that when they threw the, the, the perpetrators in, yeah. they threw them in, and before they could hit the bottom of the den, yeah. that the lions had mauled them up, nothing hit the bottom but the bones. I, I, I come by, ain't that kind of ironic that Daniel was just up there laying on the lions, chilling, talking to the lions, what's up, what was that, y'all, man, everything good, slapping high five with the lions, they wasn't hungry yeah. when he was there, why? Because yeah. the tangible effect of God yeah. was in the midst of what was going on. God kept the lion's mouth closed, made him respect, not Daniel, but he respected yeah. the power of God that was in Daniel, that was on Daniel because of Daniel's living with integrity. I come by to tell you that even when danger is around you, the Bible says he'll keep you free and safe from danger, seen and unseen. When you walk in this favor, when you walk in this integrity, God will do some things to you that no man will ever. The three Hebrew boys. They told them, they said, yeah, 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 yeah. My integrity says, kill me if you want to. Amen. For the sake of God, because whether he saves me or not, I know where I'm going. Right. I wish I had some made up mind Christians yeah. like that that would sit back and say, it don't matter what I don't got. It's all about what I do got. Right. And I ain't got to walk this earth no more unless God say I'm going to walk this earth. Hang out with us. And the Bible says that when he threw them in, he turned it up seven times. Did y'all check this story out? He turned up the furnace seven times higher to throw the boys in. And the Bible says that the men that went to go throw them in got too close to the furnace and died throwing them in because they were too close but yet I still how do you die and I still wind up making it into the fire yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. come on now yeah. how is it still so hot that now God cooled it off enough for Nebuchadnezzar to look in the, the reason why is because he needed Nebuchadnezzar to see what favor looked like yeah. he looked through the window he said three of them went in all oh, my men is dead you to understand that the intangible evidence of who God was were resting upon them. And now Nebuchadnezzar lets them out and says, I don't know what's going on. But we gonna serve they God. Because it's something about the power of God when it rests upon you. And the favor of God when it rests upon your obedience. Your enemy will look and say, I'm sorry, I need to back up, retract, and do this thing all over again. Y'all was worshiping me, not no more. We gonna worship there God. Oh, I wish I had somebody. God showed favor with David when Saul was trying to kill him. But how you look at this is David was living with integrity. 
Because he never got the order that he needed to kill Saul yeah. for trying to kill him. Yeah. But the Bible says that God allowed for him to escape the attacks. Yeah. Huh? He escaped the attacks that Saul had. And it was because of God's favor that he was able to... It, it cracked me up when the Bible says that he, he, he was standing over Saul. Mm -hmm. At the position where he could have just... Hey, can I use this word? He shamed, he could have shamed him. <laughs> but because of living with integrity, the Bible, the spirit of God that, 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 that David was identifying with says, this is not your fight. To back up, Saul looks up and sees this boy standing up. The first thing he thought is, he, he, he's about to kill me. But because of God's favor, God allowed for David to walk away. Are you listening to me? Because what God had in store for Saul was far greater than anything that David could have did. And when you walk in favor, watch this, and you move away from the physical attack on you, God's favor rests upon you will keep you moving higher while he takes care of your... Come on here. Amen, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. See the grow. Mm. The doors are still open because yeah, of favor. Hallelujah. Rest in the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch this. The favor of that man mm -hmm. was so strong that everybody in here now reaps the benefit of his favor. Hallelujah. And his exemplified act of, 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 of integrity should continue to be carried on. So that God's favor, the same favor that rested upon him, will continue to rest and reside on you. Because at the end of the day, God just wants us to live with his integrity. At the end of the day, God just wants to bless you. Yes. And he don't want to withhold any good thing. At the end of the day, God wants you to understand that it's because of his faith. That you're walking like you're walking. Amen, amen. That you're talking like you're talking. It's because of his faith. That people, when they walk by, they remember something about what happened in here years ago that he'll get them to where they are today. Yes, it's because of his faith. Oh, I wish I had a witness of it here. It's because of God's faith mm. that rests upon our lives right now. You don't know how many people's lives have changed mm. because you walked in the room yeah. and the presence of God was on you. Yeah. And it, it was powerful enough to change whatever decision mm. that person was about to make. Mm. You don't know how many people you walked past that was about to commit suicide. Mm. Yeah. But the spirit of God was resting upon you so when you walked by, they felt a peace that they had never felt before. Yeah. You may not identify with everything that God has done yes, sir. for you and through you because of his favor. Yeah. But baby, let me tell you, just keep on living with integrity. Yeah, yeah, it's because yeah. of God's favor that you will continue to soar, that you'll continue to climb, that you'll continue yeah. to meet God in the sky on this great getting up morning. It's because of his favor mm -hmm. that you're able to lift your hands and say hallelujah. Yes. It's because of his favor. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. yes. Don't miss his unmerited favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you choose to live in integrity. <laughs> Rather than living with it. Yes. All right, all right. It's because of God's favor. Come on, yeah. let's put our hands together. God's favor. Yes. It's a song that says, Your grace and mercy yes. brought me through. Yes. Yes. If it wasn't for you, Jesus, I don't know what I would do. Yes. Yes. Huh? Grace and mercy yes, yes. brought us through. Yes, yes. The favor mm -hmm. <laughs> kept us going. Yes, Lord. Huh? Yes. Your grace and mercy. Yes. Your grace and mercy. Yes, but.
We thank you, God, that we can honor these fathers today. We thank you even more that we can give you praise and honor you for being the biggest, greatest father of all. We love you, God. Yes, Lord. We love you, we love you, we love you. Yes, Lord. I ask you, oh God, that you keep us aware of how important it is for us to live with integrity. Yes, Lord. With your integrity. Yes. And it doesn't matter what man says, thinks, or feels about us. Yes. yes. We're, we're more concerned with pleasing you. Yes, Lord. So let everything that we do, Father God, represent you, line up with who you are to us. And even more so, God, bring honor to you. Yes. We don't want to miss the we don't want to miss the opportunity to not only have you grant us favor, yes. Yes, Lord. but to extend honor to us yes. for living with godly integrity. Yes. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Because of your favor. Thank you. We have things that we don't deserve because of your favor. Yes. We have things that we can never imagine that we were fit for because of your favor. Yes. And we know, God, that you're not finished with us yet. Yes. So we thank you, our name and you. With all eyes closed and heads bowed, this is a time in the service where if you don't know God for the pardon of your sins, or you want to rededicate your life, just simply raise your hands where you are and say, I'm going to get my life right with God. Yes. I'm accept him for the first time. Amen. The next call is for if you want to join, become a member of the body of Christ of Cedar Grove, of Cornerstone. You simply raise your hands and say, I'd love to be a part of a body of Christ that is growing, thriving, and striving to be what God called them to be. Amen. As we see, there's none that's still going at the cross. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Let us prepare for our love offering. And then, if it was Mother's Day, I said, let y'all out. So you